Why hello there guys, it is Qwerty Afro here bringing you another video. I'm back from Scotland finally, it's been a long time. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, free videos I scheduled over the time that I was absent. Uh, it was a long two weeks up in Loch Arable, like near Durness, near Tongue, if any of you guys know where that is up in Scotland. It was a uh, Two tedious weeks, but really enjoyable weeks for what I was doing. I was doing independent uh, geological mapping. But anyway, I'll talk a bit about more about that once I get more into the video. So, but back here with OMSI 2, and this was actually a DLC that actually came out while I was in Scotland, so I wasn't able to cover it straight away. But I'm here to have a little play on it and see what I think of it and uh, give you my thoughts and opinions or whatever. It is uh, obviously Chicago downtown from C2. I think it's the first ever kind of official uh, American map for OMC2. I don't think we've ever... I mean, there probably are some fan-made um, American maps but this is the, like probably the best detailed and most official one there is. So, uh, before we get in, uh, shoutouts go to Foscast and Mind Simulated. That's again Foscast and Mind Simulated. Their links will be down below. I am causing a bit of a traffic jam up here, but uh, we're, we're, it's uh, the timetable I'm going to be running on to doesn't really matter because I will have to forward the time anywhere a little bit slightly so the bus will disappear and the traffic will disappear. So it's all good. So, obviously, to Chicago downtown. Uh, it's uh, definitely a map that I've been looking forward to for it to come out for quite some time. When I saw like release pictures of it, I was like, wow, they're doing an American map. So, uh, it's Chicago downtown. It comes with two routes, one, uh, 130, 130, uh, or, and as well 124, which we're actually going to do the 124 today. We're going to be driving from Union Station, which if I pan around nicely, you can see that's uh, Union Station, the nice building. I'm right now inside a building, but uh, that doesn't really matter. So, we're going to be going from Union Station to uh, Navy here and uh, line 124 124 however you want to say it and then in another video I'll do the uh, 130 which I think goes from some university campus or museum campus to uh, somewhere else I can't, I'm not too sure about that but there's also two buses which actually nicely with that other bus behind me shows off the two buses that come with this uh, uh, this map Firstly, the bus I'm using is a single floor. It's fully diesel. I don't know what the make of these buses are because I'm not really, you know, I'm not really too. I don't really know too much about the American buses and like what, what makes they are, whatever, etc. I'm more uh, comfortable with kind of European buses. Uh, and then behind we have the uh, articulated bendy bus version, but with that one it's actually a hybrid slash diesel, so that's pretty cool as well. So we're going to be taking out the little diesel bus today on line 124 and I'll give you my kind of thoughts and rundowns of the map and what I think of it. I think so far it's really detailed of what I've actually sort of tried to play play off it and then I'll discuss a bit of like what's been happening in Scotland. So, uh, bus. Uh, I think we've panned around it quite a bit now. Uh, it's very detailed from the outside as well with the one behind as well but we're not going to be seeing that one in this video. So, once we go in camera now resets we have a very nice little cabin uh this thing if i just open it so you guys can just see the 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 full kind of surround here it's really really nice uh it's not too you know over detailed you know what i mean it's a very kind of basic detail it's a kind of oldish bus it's not really something really really modern but uh it's a uh, very basic uh basic dials and stuff but when you zoom in you can actually see like the detailing and the buttons and stuff like that which is really really cool and i really kind of liked it there's loads of little nicks and knacks that uh, american buses have that i don't know if european buses have and stuff i'll mention that in a bit as well uh cabin is quite nice uh there are two people on right now uh actually they're getting up because i reset it because i already did a journey from Navy Pier to Union Station so they, they want to get off now because I turned off everything with the timetabling but once I turn it on maybe they might stay on but I might actually just actually I'll, oh no I can't play electrics on or maybe if I there we go I'll, I'll just manually open the door so they can so they can get out but uh, yeah cabin's really nice uh, 
these kind of plasticky seats, nothing really special to be honest. These plastic seats look terrible to be honest, I don't think they look massively comfortable. If you've ridden on these buses, uh, tell me your thoughts, are they, are they comfortable or not, yes or no? Let's open up all the windows because it is hot. If you live in the UK, you, sh you know what uh, we've been all going through with this kind of like sort of heat wave, I I'm guessing. I leave all the windows open just to emphasize that it is kind of nice and uh, nice and warm. Let's close these doors as well. Just okay. They're just they're gonna they're gonna just stay open until I turn the electrics on or whatever. That doesn't matter. They can stay open. It doesn't really really matter. But that's the cabin. It's really nice. You have uh, loads of different kind of views and stuff like that. You know, it's a kind of the kind of norm that you get with all kind of buses. And then outside again, back in here. Get quite a lot of views as well from here. Get very nice views, nice zoomed in views, but I, I, I don't really, this one's actually pretty useful, and then that one, and then back to the beginning. Other than that, that's pretty much it with the cabin, we have a very nice fan, let me take away the serial, we have a very nice fancy ticket system, which is really cool, I'm not going to be using it, I'm just going to use the basic one, because I'm not sure how to use it, but it looks very nice, and uh, uh, some of the things that you can do with it, it pretty, looks pretty good with kind of like fair options and stuff. But mostly people come in on the kind of basic ticket seller. They just scan their kind of like oyster type card, like like in London that like we have on our buses and tube and whatever. Uh, they just tap it and it goes green and it even goes green here on this little screen to say that everything's okay with their fare and they you know they have the right correct money etc. So it's all good and it's all happy and, and and I like it. It's very nice. It makes good sound. The sounds in this are very good and uh, detail is generally very good on this map. Other than that, we have up here obviously the uh, controls for the you know climate control etc. Aircon. I don't know if this is aircon, but it's just probably just fans, heaters, and just it blows normal air etc. Out whatever. Other than that. You know, you have your little controls over here, which I can just go into this panel to show. So, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Most of the things are like climate control, little options and stuff for like lighting, etc. Engine override, engine start button. You have the kind of, which is cool with American buses, which you have the kind of here where you can have a day run, night run, or night park. So it turns the electrics on to the right type of thing. So if you're in the day run, which we're going to actually go now, so I can just actually press E right now and go to the day run. It puts it on a day run, and if I go into the cab right now, if it would allow me, uh, it turns on a few lights. Uh, while if say if I put it onto uh, if I put it onto night run, it goes full. It lights up like a Christmas tree in here, if you know what I mean. So it's nice that you have those kind of options, and then obviously you have like night park which I don't know what that does this probably just turns on all the lights outside like a Christmas tree and that's all good but we're just gonna leave it on a day run because it is the middle of the day up here is like uh, the station break which you pull down and then it opens the doors etc so it's like you know it's uh, it's already open now but uh, I'll just leave it there where it was that's pretty much it on that side. Down here, which I was talking about, what American buses have, they actually have the uh, indicator stalks. Uh, but, but they don't actually have any indicator stalks, so they're on the steering wheel. But uh, the American buses have, or oh, I don't know if this, probably some European buses have this too, but I've just only seen it on American buses. They have the, uh, the indicators uh, that you hold down with your foot. So left and then right, etc. And now here you actually have a cool, if I can actually get back to this camera. If you press this button here down here, so let me just zoom because I, I don't think you can see my mouse. If you press this button here, and if I go back, if we press it, it does a you know high beam flash, which is pretty cool. The yellow buttons are parking brake, self explanatory there. Nothing really much else. The dash just has really cool, you know, like hazard warning lights, etc. You have the kneel and the ramp buttons, etc. Here on the right, which is nice. And then obviously the DN, DNR, kind of like, uh, you know, automatic gear kind of settings or whatever. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, wipers, panel, panel lights if you can turn on. I don't know. Whatever. 
but that's it. That's uh, that's uh, pretty much it there with that. Uh, my, the map is loading a little bit in funny. I've I've been trying to tweak up with the settings to get it like properly working. I've had a few problems. I've posted on Facebook. I haven't had a, had a few problems with the textures, but so far I've done a full run. And it hasn't crashed or hasn't done anything, and hopefully it will stay like that. Um, people have been having problems as I've been reading, but uh, uh, hopefully I've kind of sorted out the issue, reinstalled it. I think that's the best thing to do. Sometimes. Sometimes things that you get off Steam, especially because I got it on Steam, I didn't get it off Aerosoft, because you can get it either on Aerosoft or Steam. Uh, some things you get on Steam, like I've had this with Trains of Anomaly, uh, you download it and then some things are missing and you just have to re-download it again and it should hopefully work then again. Uh, other than that, uh, we'll get to this thing just a minute. A minute. Uh, this is cool. Uh, very nice shows the time and the date and then once you input the uh, timetabling and stuff in and the line and the route number and stuff it then does the announcements where it shows uh, uh, the next stop the bus name of the, the, what was it, the bus name the bus stop name of the next stop uh, you have the automatic announcement so you don't even have to press Q you just let the announcements flow and then it's uh, also it shows the bus request so when someone puts a bus request it shows that a bus stop request has been requested or whatever which is pretty cool I like that that's really cool also you have these uh, emergency you know lift lift the things up maybe it's good to keep it open because it is a bit 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 hot other than that uh, I think we're ready to rock and roll I'm just gonna quickly on the OMSI uh, menu pick a uh, a timetable to do uh, which is uh, 16 actually can I do a, a little bit of a later one 60 uh, oh 18 past uh, 18 past four which is in a few minutes so I don't even have to change the time which is pretty good so we're gonna just replace that bus which is good uh, and then over here on this little yellow slip it gives us the little run number at the bottom here uh, the at the top is the drive ID and the pin which we input up here into this very fancy computer so I'll just do it again I was actually logged on but I'll just do it again to show you guys so 1805 I do believe for the uh, ID and 9691 for the password once you get onto here go on to run and I do believe if I, if I remember 602 it was 602 enter and then it uh, sets it all up with the with the uh, it sets it up all with the stuff here on the screen showing the kind of uh, bus stop names etc up here uh, it shows the timetable for the whole kind of full shift of this kind of 602 uh, you know shift for this type of bus I think every there's like a few shifts and this is one of them and instead of showing like uh, the full kind of timetable of each individual bus stop name it just shows you the actual full shift for the whole day for this kind of like shift quarter so it shows you literally from the top from the garage all the way to when your shift would finish at the end of the day when you go back to the garage so I might even do that I might do uh, uh, like I might do like a few videos on this map one showing one th the line for 130 after this one and then maybe showing one where we go from the garage to do a, like a line or a shift and then maybe one going back to the garage I don't know but other than that that's all sorted out with those uh, with the computer input there that now changes and flashes the different names and stuff which is cool the doors are open because I do believe I have the station break on I haven't even changed I actually haven't even uh, I don't think I've, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm causing a bit of traffic jam now so I do, I do apologize to those bus drivers but I'm, I'm talking to my lovely subscribers and I'm explaining to them stuff so they, they can they can uh, wait if they want to so I think that is pretty much it the matrix display is really cool uh, and uh, on some of the lines when there's longer things to say like oh it's going to Union Station via this it will actually change and go to a different you know screen saying oh via Madison or something like that which is cool shows down here K602 the actual shift or like bus number driver number or whatever associated with the line which is pretty cool other than that I think we're actually ready to turn on the engine there we go you can see the exhaust there at the top uh, back left of the bus which is cool I kind of like it when the buses have their exhausts popping up from the top I think it's much better than having it right down at street level 
Like, uh, there's some, there's buses around Europe that have that kind of system. Like, the old man MEN buses have that, like, in the middle somewhere, which is pretty cool. I've been on some of them. And, uh, I just, I just it's much, much, much better. Anyway, enough of me jambling on. We need to, uh, get, get a move on, because I do believe, what time is it once it comes up here? Yeah, we need to start heading out, so we can close the doors with the station break. We'll see how the ticket stuff works when we, uh, when we get a move on. Oh, and one thing I forgot to do is actually change gear, which is kind of embarrassing. Right, off we go. My uh, Well, this is not my first time, but first time on uh, the channel driving uh, the... Oh, one thing I actually have forgotten to do is put on the directions, because I'm still getting a custom, even though there is only... There's only two routes, and 124 isn't the longest route, I'm not going to lie, it isn't now, the longest route, Adams. but I still need uh, directions to, to tell me where to go. And as you heard there, the announcements just kicked in and uh, does it automatically, so I don't even have to worry about pressing Q. Very nice, he does it. A lot of really good detailed scenery on this map, I have to say. Uh, it's it's weird driving in something like a city like this because like mostly you know, obviously we're used to like dri driving in kind of European style cities and then when you have something uh, like this that's really American and full of loads of skyscrapers and stuff it's a bit overwhelming as well. What's also cool is you can see I don't know if I can get a good uh, if I can get a good glimpse of it. No, I don't think I can. But the bus stops if I can even get a good glimpse of it from here the bus stops have. Uh, countdown displays, which is really, really nice, and you know me and my countdown displays. I absolutely love them. Love them in Metro Sim. I wish Train Simulator had them, and Omsi in certain maps uh, really does have really nice bus uh, countdown displays at stations, and it just it just makes it it just gives that uh, like detail of uh, like a bit more immersion in the kind of AI and stuff, and I really do like that. up here to red light as he does it and, F and actually FPS is actually not too bad on this I thought it would be much lower in terms of let's get it just before I s there we go look at that that's just that's just really nice I like that and there's obviously other AI that are doing other lines like there's 60125 and there's uh, some more 66 etc uh, but uh, those are all just uh, other AI things. They could have easily put a few more lines in uh, in this, but I think they've genuinely here they went for the quality instead of the quantity, and uh, I don't mind. It's nice. It's it's a refreshing thing to play, and definitely for like say my American and Canadian fans, this is definitely something that they probably would love uh, to have because I know loads of Canadians and Americans who talk to me about the buses and stuff in America and stuff and send me pictures and stuff off buses in America it's they're really they just and and, and they like Omsi as well but Omsi doesn't offer a lot in America and then finally to be having this kind of thing come out with uh, you know the kind of American spirit of buses and stuff is pretty cool anyway I'm not going to stop at this station because oh actually hold, hold up someone just someone just uh, annoyingly just press the bell so I have to comply to that but that was a very late call there sir that was probably maybe for the next one but weirdly here if we continue on a little bit the stops are very close less than 20 meters apart <laughs> which is pretty funny I don't get that why uh, why only like 20 meters apart oh one thing I actually did forgot to do I forgot to uh Got to close the uh, little guard here. <laughs> As you've been seeing with the ticket machine, it's been uh, doing that thing where when they scan their thing, it uh, shows up green saying, okay, yep, transaction done or whatever it says, which is just really nice. It's, it's cool. It's like the Oasis system, really. And then up here now, because I think someone's did a bus request? Does anyone know? No one's done a bus request. But when it's but when someone does a bus request, it says they're bus requested, which is pretty cool. And other than that, nothing really actually much else dynamic in the cabin. It would be cool if there was like another 
uh, thing saying all the clip information like up here. Because I find in single decker buses, like when it gets packed, you can't really see that. Uh, you can't really see that information display if it's like fully packed. So it would be cool if there was a, uh, if there was one in the middle of the bus. Oh, I've turned my hazard lights on for some reason. <laughs> also, these things. The one, the thing I'm rolling on right now. Uh, they actually are dynamic. I think they actually work. They work like train crossings a bit as well, and they uh, they they close one uh, when there's like I don't know river traffic or whatever. They get she uh, open and close and uh, stop stop you in your tracks. One also cool thing, as you heard in the announcement, the announcer doesn't actually just say the, the bus stop names. It also says like things like "oh, smoking and stuff is prohibited," which is I like that. It's a nice little like little touch there. You hear it on like certain transportation systems. Like if you go to the London Underground, uh, sometimes you'd have a uh, most of the time it is an automatic, but sometimes you'd have a manual announcement. Uh, inputted in like to say oh smoking and stuff is prohibited on any London Underground station or whatever and it's it's just nice and it's nice to to hear it on a on a bus so it it breaks the norm a bit with these kind of announcements and stuff because they're very simple they're just like oh yeah the next stop is that uh, but it's nice to hear like other things inputted in which is cool and then uh, it also like says like uh, if if there's any kind of Thing to change, like if it's any kind of main interchange point where you change uh, with a, uh, uh, a subway route or another, I think certain like major bus lines or whatever will say, oh yeah, this is the next station, you know, change here. Oh, and also, but even to mention, yeah, what are you uh, doing? we have American voices in this, so uh, it's, it's all authentic. <laughs> Anyone here? Yes, I do believe there is. Alright. There we go. Hello. Oh, she doesn't have a ticket. Well, she probably. I don't know, why, why is that? Like, some of them have tickets, some of them don't have tickets. They just, like, walk through and they make eye contact and that's it. <laughs> Also, these these cool things here, the kind of eyes or whatever, like tourist hotspots, etc. Just to give like little, like say, obviously I have not been to Chicago. I don't know anything about Chicago. It's very nice to, like, okay, that's the Chicago River. Didn't know that. I will need to merge here into the same. Can you let me? Thank you. It's very nice to know little hotspots and stuff in in Chicago. It reminds me very much like uh, Watch Dogs. Obviously, Watch Dogs was based on like a future uh, Chicago. That was like the first thing. That's the kind of first thing I was kind of like, uh, it kind of reminded me of when I sat down and actually played this for a bit by myself. I was like, this really feels a bit like, you know, a bit like Watch Dogs, but just me driving the bus. Very cool. There we go, go. It's pretty cool. One also thing which might annoy some people or might like be cool for people is that the indicators do not automatically turn off so you know you know in a normal european bus or just a bus with st uh, but, uh, indicator stalks uh you turn the wheel and it automatically turns off and maybe some people like i in real life it's weird like some bus drivers completely forget about the indicator and just completely leave it on and because on some buses it automatically turns off some buses it doesn't and on most buses, I think it actually doesn't. I don't know why, but it it, it it doesn't like on most buses that I've been on. And on certain buses, is a very distinct beep that that you know the indicator makes, so you can really hear it. But I've been on buses sometimes where the bus driver just completely leaves it on and doesn't really even you know, just, and then realizes maybe when he gets to the next station, it's like you're leaving your indicator on for like you know five minutes. Like it's crazy. But very good detail on this one. The only thing I've had problems with is the kind of some settings and texture issues, etc., which can be a little bit annoying and frustrating. And I had some crashes and stuff with with it when I was trying to record this video. Like, look at this. That is annoying. The 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 kind of tile count and the tile popping in and stuff like that. 
it's bearable now that it's like running smoothly and I haven't had any kind of crashes in further testing where I've like changed around the settings, but that is a bit annoying. But obviously because there's loads of tall buildings and loads of tall assets, it just comes in in a block. And then obviously in, the, in this kind of map for OMSI, you're going to notice it more than somewhere like in Berlin or whatever where there's not a lot of tall buildings and everything just kind of pops in with like behind stuff and you won't really see it but here because everything's sticking up into the sky you're going to pretty much see everything pop in when there's like a gap or something but hopefully it's all smooth and everything is going to everything's going to be alright So, Scotland. How was Scotland? Scotland, for me, was... Uh, it was great. It was a very good experience. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it was a bit tedious at points, uh, but, you know, that's the thing. I chose geology, and I liked the whole kind of outdoors aspect of the degree, and the whole kind of thing with the career. It was like, what you can do in the outdoors. What we were doing there was we were just mapping the whole area. It's called... Uh, it's called uh, Loch Erebor where we went. It's very near, like it's 15 kilometers away from Tung and Durness, which are the nearest like towns. And it's literally at the very top of Scotland. And literally, the loch is looking out towards the kind of sea. Which, if you keep going further up north, you get to almost the Arctic Circle, obviously like the Fer uh, the Faroe Islands, etc. But it's it's it was such an amazing place like the the thing that was the most annoying was probably getting there the journey took about can, are you gonna let me are you gonna, no he's gonna be a rude taxi driver the the whole the, the, the worst thing was getting there it was so long and tedious it took like about 13 hours i didn't do it in whole one whole city because i was the only driver we like stopped over in dalkeith south of edinburgh which was which was nice. I didn't really get to go into Edinburgh. We passed. We drove into Edinburgh, which was cool. And it was. It, it was all really, really nice of what I saw. And it just then involved driving. Uh, driving up through all of Scotland was really nice. Like driving through England was pretty boring because it was just a motorway. But once you get into Scotland and once you get past pretty much Edinburgh, it was really nice. And then uh, we got to Inverness, which was our like kind of that was like the last major city. Where we like did our huge like shop because we had to like buy like all our shopping and stuff for food etc. And we did that at Inverness. And then after Inverness, it just turned into like B roads and stuff like that, and it was really crazy. And it was some really nice roads to drive on. Like I mean, like those are my like favorite types of roads to drive on. Now, what is this cab doing? Here? He looks like he's. Is anyone coming from that side? Anything from that side? No, I don't know what that guy was doing. But I'm just going to continue. So yeah, we uh, loads of lovely B roads and stuff up there. It was it was really cool. We passed through a city, a little town called Lake, which was really nice. It has a, like a cute little island in the middle of its uh, lake or river, passing through it, and it has like a little island with a very little miniature kind of model house on it, which was really cool to see. And we almost went to the lake. We almost went to the lake music festival. But we like we decided not to have a day off, which uh, I don't know. Some might see that as crazy, but uh, we did. We just didn't have a day off, really. Like we had like kind of like say we cut our days a little shorter sometimes, but we never really had like a full day off of just resting. Although we were always working, doing something, and it involved a lot of stuff. Like the whole site we were doing was so complicated. I don't really want to go to. Wait, is this a green light for me? Oh no, it's a green light for the middle track. I don't want to go into too much complicated specifics because it, it's obviously a little bit like what we were what we were essentially doing was we were mapping out crops of rock etc rocks you see on the coast rocks you see inland etc uh, normally coastal rocks would normally be the easier in most places they're easier to map because they're exposed have a lot of layers and stuff and beds of rocks shown but in this place we went to was the complete opposite where uh, the coast was ultra complex and ultra hard, and inland was actually pretty pretty easy. But it, uh, the main type of rock we we uh, we mapped was pretty much just sandstone. There was nothing else there. There was a bit of a bit of nice, 
which if you guys don't know what nice is, it's a metamorphosed granite. And if you don't know what granite is, then it's just a, it's a rock, very common igneous rock with loads of crystals inside it. But uh, it, uh, it, it that was pretty much it, and it was it was very interesting. It was just long days. Like first few days, we kind of did some recon where you basically go around, you you just scout the area, take some like basic observational notes of like where you would want to generally map and where you want to come back and go, and, you know, do proper detailed uh, notes and stuff off the area, and then like put it onto your map, etc. And that and that involved like a few days, and then we got like we really here onto the coast first. We we did the coast, which was the most complicated bit, where we were just categorizing things, and then we went inland, etc. It was it was it was so much fun. I I really did enjoy it, and uh, we have to go back there next year for a whole month, which is gonna be really interesting. Like two weeks felt like really a really long time. I do not want to know what a month will feel like there, but the cottage we stayed in was really nice. We stayed on like the arable farm estate, which was pretty cool, in like a nice little cottage, and uh, it was really nice. Hello. Hello. Weather and stuff. Weather actually wasn't too bad. I thought it was going to rain much more. The, w the weather on the Isle of Arran was like much worse. Up here in like arable it was it was actually decent it was really good like there was a few times where it rained a bit but there was no hard rain or anything there was no sleet or snow like we had in Aaron uh, generally we had like all right days uh, some sunny days actually as well one thing that was really weird with arable and it's because obviously you live that far north is that it pretty much never got dark uh, it was really freaky and it took a bit of time to adjust and then when I came back to London it took me a bit more time to adjust to having the darkness back again because normally there it doesn't really get dark until maybe you know two three four and then it only stays a bit dark not even like fully fully pitch black dark it stays dark for maybe a few hours and then it goes back to light and so there's always when you're looking out your window when you're in your bedroom sleeping it's always light and it just really messes with your mind because you you go to sleep with the kind of same brightness that you wake up in and it's I don't know, it's a bit freaky, but I kind of enjoyed it. But the thing is, like, that's in the summer. It, like, I was talking to some of the locals when, you know, when we went to the supermarket and the market there. But in the in the winter, it's, like, fully pitch black. It was obviously... When you're nearer, when you're nearer to the poles, uh, in the summer, the North Pole is close is, is facing more of the sun than it is in the in the uh, in the winter so in the winter uh, it's facing more away from the sun so it's pretty much mostly dark it, well at the North Pole it's pitch black for most of uh, most of the winter like maybe you might have like one hour a few hours of sunlight but most of the time it's in darkness so that's why up there in the north of Scotland they actually have really really dark winters I wouldn't really be able to handle that. Like, I don't mind this where it's like light pretty much all day, but I'm darkness most of the time. That that's just it's a bit freaky. Right, continuing down here. I'm actually whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, I think I, I think. I think I must have taken a wrong turn because this is a dead end. <laughs> right, let's zoom out a little bit more. Let's see where we are. Oh, oh, we went wrong quite badly. <laughs> right, uh, illegal U-turn time. I was wondering why it was getting less detail. I thought like the textures weren't working or whatever, but then I realised, no, this is this is, has to be a dead end or something. But no matter, we'll just do a nice illegal U-turn and we'll just uh, head back to our location. Uh, sorry, passengers. I just wanted to sh uh, go down to this uh, bottom end of the road and show the show the viewers, show the viewers around. And we're just gonna we're gonna cheat a bit here and. Uh, just, uh, just book it. Oh, then <laughs> there's a green light. I didn't really even cheat there. All right, and then we're now back on track, going a little bit diverted, but you know, <laughs> yeah, it is a uh, you know, first video on Chicago downtown. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm lost. 
<laughs> Everything looks the same. <laughs> it's just it's just grid and grid streets, grid streets and grid streets of towers and skyscrapers, etc. It's crazy. Come on, allow me to go. But generally, overall, I so enjoyed Scotland. Definitely would go again. Well, I am going again. Right. Oh, you gonna let me go? Thank you. And my kind of plans for the summer, but I'm still like, I go to Croatia. Don't know when. Probably near the end of July, but I'll definitely have videos and stuff in the works to schedule over the summer. I definitely want to record a huge amount of videos for this summer because previous summers I've been very like I've only done like a few normally, but this time I really want to uh, go for it. And uh... what's happening here? Why the pass? Oh, whoa, it's <laughs> a bit crazy there. That little bit of a zoom. Are you not uh, coming aboard? This is this looks like only a stop for. Uh, I'm gonna continue. We go. Is gonna come aboard. Ah, yeah. There you go. There's like a little like area, or whatever, like in most obviously maps, where sometimes the passengers don't come on, but then you have to move a little bit to get into their kind of zone where they're gonna be. Like, oh yeah, I wanna come on board this bus. Right. I think that's it with that, and then just have to continue here. These bus stops are really, really, really close to like a junction. It's really crazy. Like, look, the bus stops right here and then bam, you're into like a junction here where you, like, it's on the corner of a junction. That's really weird because you don't see that a lot like here in the UK. I don't, the bus stops aren't really placed that far close to like a traffic light or whatever. Especially going into the junction, maybe away from the junction, I understand, but going into a junction's a bit, a bit crazy. But overall, I positively l am liking this add-on for Obsi. I think it's a very much a, a bit of fresh air, to be honest. Hello. Is that door closed? Yes, it is. And another red light. This is just something we wouldn't be so used to. But generally, I like it. The detail is good. The buildings are textured like well for what obviously can deliver. The bus is very nice to drive. Very nice sounds. I love the interaction with the ticket selling thing. Well, well not the ticket selling, but the ticket machine. I really do like this. Uh, this this whole kind of like this kind of American IBIS system, like on the European buses that we have. Uh, this is really really cool. Uh, I love the countdowns on the bus stops. Uh, I think the only like uh, the only thing I don't really like about this is that I feel that it's. Um, I feel maybe one more route would have done it. I feel two routes is a little like, I don't know, I know it's very detailed, but I, I feel one more route could have done it, or maybe one more bus. I feel it, they went a little bit lazy on the bus and they just did one type of bus and uh, and basically instead of, it's really just one bus, it wasn't really two how they've kind of done it. Because really all the other buses is just a stretched version of this one and they slap a hybrid uh, sign on it. That's pretty much it, and they could have easily done like uh, a maybe an older, even older bus, or even a really, really nice new modern bus. Now, why not? Right. I think we're near Navy Pier now. Yes, we're very near. Welcome to Navy Pier. The most economical way to see all that Chicago has to offer is on CTY. CTY three-day passes offer three days of unlimited riding for one low price. More about it on chicagotraffic.com or oh. call 888-YOUR-CTY for sales locations. Oh, that's really cool. Very nice. 
And I do believe, yeah, that's how it says it says stop requested, which is really nice. I do believe this is the last stop, which is sad, but you know. There we go, Davy Pier Tablis. Nice, he does it. And we were, oh, we were late. In, well, that little diversion or whatever made us a little bit late, so I, I kind of expect that. But other than that, oh, look at that formerly line. Imagine if humans actually did that, like when they, when they, when they get, what was I saying, humans, people. Imagine if people just walked out the bus and just kind of like went in an orderly fashion line. That'd be pretty freaky. Also, I notice here that. Their indicators on the back are all red, which is interesting. Some cars as well have uh, all red indicators. They don't have orange or whatever, which is it's a bit like, why just don't just do orange, you know? Be, be, you know good. And then automatically here, you can see it changes to go back to Unison, uh, I mean, let's see, Unison, Union Station, which is pretty cool. And then uh, this is what I mean, how the uh, the uh, operation, I mean, I'm going to say the operation, the, uh, the matrix, the destination point matrix changes and it's uh, dynamic. And I really do like that. That's a really nice kind of like detailed feature of the bus. Other than that, I think we are done. What does it say on this side? Pull up to this point during layover. Well, we are in sort of layover right now. I can, if I want to, turn off. There we go. Turn off the engine. Turn off the indicators. Why don't we need to? But that's it. That is, uh, that is line 124. And... That is a glitched up bus. This is what I mean. This is why I've been having problems with some of the textures. Some of the buses don't load up and then some of the buildings and then it might reflect to my bus and whatever. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I have inst reinstalled or whatever, but not all the... Some, it's weird. Some of them do this, some of them don't. It's it's really crazy. It's really weird. But uh, I haven't really seen much of it except for now, just now to the, to the end of that. So it's not really a major problem, but it is a little bit of a buggy problem I am having with this map. Other than that, that is line 124, 124 from uh, Union Station to uh, Navy Pier. I definitely will at some point do uh, 130 or 130 uh, with the Bendy bus, the Bendy Hybrid Electric bus. And uh, possibly do stuff with the garage as well that you can drive from or drive to at the end of a shift, which would be also cool. What's also cool with the buses is that they come with different uh, the different skins basically for this one, change the... Uh, advertisement which is pretty cool uh, I think there's some that you could get like bikes and stuff at the front which is pretty cool as well but uh, generally I'm very content with this uh, I think uh, on Steam it's uh, selling for about 15 pounds which is just, like the normal prices like for like Vienna etc and on Aerosoft I don't know if it's slightly cheaper but it's like about 20 euro on uh, or something like that on uh, Aerosoft I don't know if that works out to about 15 pounds so I don't know if it's slightly expensive or slightly cheaper on Aerosoft, but either one you get from should be fine. I just did it on Steam because it's you know fairly easy or whatever. But I don't know if less people are having problems on the Aerosoft version than on the Steam version or whatever. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the shout went to Forzcast and Mind Simulated. The links and stuff will be down below. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the, this first video on Chicago Downtown. There'll be definitely a few more at some point on this channel, and uh, definitely more Humpsy stuff. Uh, and it's good to be back for this kind of short time until I go to Croatia, but uh, I don't think you use it up. Uh, streams are going to be, I don't know, I, I'm not going to have any sort of schedule anymore. I'm just going to try and do certain days if I can. And the best place to know if I'm streaming is my Facebook page, the Steam group, YouTube as well. I upload the video to say that I'm streaming. And other than that, that's pretty much it. Just follow me on Twitch as well if. Uh, if you haven't already to get like a notification when I go uh, live on like Android or Apple devices or an email if you just have a computer but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed that I um, I definitely would recommend this map definitely for the avid American bus fan and uh, even if you're European or whatever and just want a kind of flavor of America this is definitely good and it's the only kind of really good detailed American route for uh, obviously, but I don't know if there's any other really good fan made one. I need to dig into that as well. But other than that, I hope you guys have a lovely day. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>
Jesus.